this is Melvin, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to take a look at the Magnus. So the Magnus is a solo journaling RPG and that might come as a surprise to uh, some of you who have watched my previous videos because you would know that I am not the biggest fan of pure journaling games. And um, the reason is pretty simple, is mainly because um, I am not good at just using prompts as a tools to generate stories. Um, I find it much easier if there is some kind of gameplay mechanisms that uh, involve using, for example, dice test or some kind of tracking your character sheets where there is, you know, stats that you need to track or, you know, some kind of um, uh, things that you can you can lean on to generate the stories. So. Um, but uh, that said, I do enjoy certain aspects of a uh, journaling games, uh, namely because most of them are very thematic. Uh, they will deal with uh, a story or a theme in a much deeper sense than your general fantasy style um, solo role playing games where you use a mystic system or you know, Iron Swan and so forth to just you know, roll on a, a, a table of D100 tables and get your results. Most of the journal games talk about, you know, deep um, uh, subject matters. Um, the most popular examples will be the Thousand Year Vampire, which looks into, you know, the uh, a lonely vampire that goes through uh, thousands of years losing uh, all his connections and even memories and so forth. So that is the aspect that I enjoy about uh, solo journaling games. And I, I also there's one aspect and that is often uh, when we talk about solo journaling games, they come with really nice artistic designs. So uh, it comes as to my surprise that uh, this game, the Magnus, actually managed to keep both the, you know, the plus side or the things that I liked about journaling games, but at the same time provide just enough gameplay mechanisms. Uh, so for people like myself who prefers using you know gameplays to drive stories, I also get what I want in this game. So. Uh, this is a game that you can find on HIO uh, and as you can see this is a beautiful design game. Uh, funny enough this is actually, uh, believe it or not, this is all designed just using PowerPoint uh, and some arts that is generated using the AI um, art generating tools. Um, so um, in a sense this product uh, itself is a miracle because um, you can see how beautifully it is designed and um, with just so little tools and it is a proof that anyone with you know if you if you want you can design something um, with you know, this kind of uh, uh, quality. So what we do in this game is you are going to play as a Magnus where uh, basically a wizard who lives in a lonely tower and you are going through your mementos uh, trying to reminisce your, your history so uh, throughout your life what you have done and how did you get to this point so the idea is that you will go through seven events and then you will come up to the end of the stories um, now these events are your typical um, uh, prompts if you like, uh, so you will be asked some questions and then you will generate the stories and then you go on to the next one and so forth. Now the difference is, is that this game focuses on um, a couple of traits. So the four traits that is involved in these games will be the focus, power, control and scar. So for focus, it is a combination of your experience points and also your um, luck in your board games or role playing games, where you can spend it to do a re-roll when, you, um, when you're doing tests. Uh, it is also used as an experience, so uh, your Magnus will become more powerful um, if you have more focus and um, it basically represents your inner strength, so your willpower 
and you know how much resolve you have when you come to you know difficult situations and obviously the power is pretty uh, self-explanatory this is showing how powerful your wizard is so you start with level one which means that you are gifted with sparks of arcane power uh, which is rare and remarkable but nothing you know crazy so you can during the game the the, the seven events you can increase your um, your your wizard's power uh, up to level three, which is almost a uh, omnipotent, so it's almost like a godlike figure by that point. Now the interesting part is that um, you cannot get um, everything, so you can't just you know get both focus and also power. There is always a sacrifice that you can make to uh, make, and I will touch upon that a bit later. Uh, the third trait that you need to track is your control. So this is kind of um, a doom's clock, if you like. Uh, basically, throughout your seven events, um, if you select certain uh, uh, routes or if you fail certain tests, then you will basically um, lose, start losing your control. So your your wizard will become uh, more paranoid and so forth, um, and then. You, you will become like a, a cracked person or broken person and you will basically need to roll risk dice when you when you are, are solving that um, that kind of event and obviously if you roll one then uh, it will trigger an early end which is called a calamity in this game uh, so I mean there's also scars which is not uh, game, there's no gameplay mechanics to this one, but this one is interesting in the sense that it is your your typical traits in your role playing game. So this is where you generate your stories. If you have a specific scar, like Hounded by Fae, then you can generate some kind of stories to it. Um, on top of these four traits, there are two things uh, that will be kind of your currency in the game. Uh, first of all, is the spell. So the spell is a representation of how powerful, obviously, your, your wizard is. And the spell is pretty straightforward. You will be uh, given a list of uh, tables. So for example, in this case, there will be D6 tables. Uh, in some other cases, there will be more options. So you roll on a D6 and you will get the spell. So it's just a name, uh, but it gives you kind of a, uh, a prompt to um, to say what kind of spell that is and there will be a specific test involved that you need to pass in order to gain this spell. Uh, on the other side of the spell will be bonds. So these are your relationship with human. Um, so uh, during your seven events, you will be given a lot of chances to meet uh, friends and foes and even improve those relationships if you're willing to um, so So overall it's a very straightforward game. It is your typical um, uh, Journaling games if you like where you are going through a couple of events Writing down if you have meet friends or foes if you gain power and so forth but this game involves using dice and that makes it a little bit more crunchy than you expected. So, uh, in the interest of time, I think we are going to start this game and uh, it will be much easier to go through the, uh, the gameplay through that instead. Of, so. so, in the interest of time, I have already given my uh, wizard uh, a name, so I've decided to call him Theo. And as you can see, we start with zero focus. Uh, our power level is one, so it's the basic level. Um, then we will have a control of perfect at the start and we don't have any scars. So the first thing to do with this game is that we have to define uh, who we are. So we, we need to roll on the origins of our wizard. So we obviously know the name. Uh, and the next question is basically who you are in life. So, um, I'm just gonna say that I am a uh, orphan of the uh, Hundred Year Wars in the uh, in in, in the England. So I'm basically just an orphan. Um, I was adopted by a um, a priest uh, in in a church, and uh, I worked as a stable boy, for example, in that case. So. Um, again, you can write a lot of stories if you want, but in this case, I'm just going to make it as simple as possible. 
Uh, what is interesting is that there is going to be a few tables that you can roll on to generate a bit more details about the world. So uh, the first table that we need to roll on is what is magic like in the world. So magic can be an infinite, uh, magic can be an inf infinitely rare power in your universe, or perhaps is as common as sunlight. Write three key phrases to describe it, or roll. Uh, D12 three times and refer to the table below. So I'm just going to use the table and I'm going to roll on the D12 three times. So the first one, so it's going to be 11. So there are many established wizarding families with lineage uh, dating centuries. Okay, so it's kind of like a, a Harry Potter world if you want. Uh, so there are lots of families with that. Uh, the next one. Uh, six magic corrupts anyone who uses it so okay so that's interesting so there's a price to pay if you need uh, to use magic and the last one a three so arcana is deeply forbidden by the state okay so uh, straight away we get a bit of sense of the world so I'm just gonna quickly write them down and I'm gonna go show you how I'm gonna do it instead of your normal um, you know writing a huge paragraph. I'm just going to write the three sentences as it mentioned here. So the world will be first Arcana is forbidden and there are many families basically uh, wizard families uh, and then the last one that we wrote magic is texting so anyone who using the um, anyone who uses any magic will need to give up something so i don't know what it is but we'll go through and see what it generates in the stories so the second part is your talents for a cane reviews itself one day and whether or not it took you by surprise your powers manifested one day where did it come from? Describe what happened or roll a d6. So again, we're going to roll a d6. It's going to be three. A vagabond visit whom you have befriended patiently taught you how to cast magic. Okay, so a drifter, a uh, wandering wizard. So kind of like your uh, Gandalf type, I guess, um, who befriended us and taught us about magic so so again I'm going to write them down and uh, the next one is obviously um, there's also some kind of um, uh, suggestion of the world that we will be playing in so uh, it's recommended that we will be playing in a medieval fantasy or adjacently themed a world so in our cases I as I mentioned it will be in medieval uh, after the hundred year war, uh, sorry, the hundred year war, or during the hundred year war, where we are in uh, an orphan of the war, and then wizards are and m magi's are mostly loners. So in this case, even though if they have you know families, visiting families, they are still mainly loners. So they're not involved in uh, the daily daily lives of I don't know farmers or something. Uh, and the last one is the magic can be incredibly destructive and can trick world ending uh, catastrophes if gone wrong. So these are very powerful being. So um, we're going to go to the next one. So with those in mind, so we have learned our magic through a vagabond uh, visit um, who we befriended. But how? Not sure. But we'll keep that in mind. So you realize you can do so much more. Acquiring ultimate power attracts you. What, where, where does this desire came from? Stern from. Write down a burning, obsessive reasons or roll d4. And we're going to roll a d4. Um, so it's number two. So you want to make the world a better place with so much suffering and senses hurt. The only way to create a fair world is by taking things into your own hand. And that makes a lot of sense because uh, we are uh, we are an orphan uh, in the hundred year world, uh, sorry, in a hundred year war. So we have seen the uh, the tragedy of um, 
or the or the atrocities in, of war. So we are trying to make it a better world through using magic. Okay, so the next one is becoming the greatest magus requires utmost effort and concentration. Perhaps it's just as well that you begin this journey alone, for you find yourself friendless and solitary at the moment. Write Y or roll D6. Let's see what we get. A6, you required a skilled manta, and no one in your hometown can take on this role. Uh, which makes sense again, because obviously we learned in the history that this world um, in this world, there are many um, wizarding families uh, who I assume will be, uh, you know, keeping all the, the power to themselves. So they're the most powerful wizard. And obviously, our previous mentor, our friend, the Vagabond, uh, is just, you know, a drifter. So he's definitely not going to be um, great at, uh, you know, world uh, altering powers or, or world altering spells. So, we have a bit of a story, and uh, we're going to start our journey. So, in this game, there will be seven events. Um, after every two events, we will have, a, have a, a little bit of time to reflect on the previous two uh, and write down a bit of stories and so forth. But uh, the way it works is that you start with the, um, the very first uh, encounter, but for every encounter, you can decide to not do this, uh, but look at the next one instead and to progress from one to the next ones you will need to roll some dice uh, i think it's one. a d stand you will need to roll uh, a d6 and a d4 and then it will see the absolute values or oh, sorry the absolute differences in this case it's six and three so we'll get uh three so we'll progress uh to uh basically uh the fourth so let's quickly look at the first um, event and this one says gain a new bond you encounter someone who makes a deep impression on you and they are again there's quite a lot of tables so um, as mentioned here you can we can uh, skip this one to do the next one instead and in this case I am actually going to do it because when we, 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 we remember we said that we have left our previous uh, locations so in our case it's probably the the, the church um, where, where we worked as a stable boy uh, and we look for some uh, some other places to learn these uh, uh, learn about this powerful spells to change the world to a better place um, or find those visiting families so we are going to look at the first table so who we met so it's a d4 so it is a three so three is a father uh, tolling hard to night to provide for his twins, a single father. Okay, and we are going to roll on the next two. So these are two d6. So it's four. He is a charismatic leader. And what else do we know about him? So two. And speaks in the whispers. Okay, that is very interesting. So I guess the um, single father tolling heart to night to provide for his twins and also as a charismatic leader. I would interpret that as he is kind of like um, uh, the leader of his village. So he basically has two twins. He has lost his, uh, his wife. Um, I would say it's probably through a plague in war or disease or something or, or, firm, or vermin or something. Uh, but he's still uh, considered as the uh, the leader of the village, uh, and he speaks in a whisper. So he is, in this case, I would say that it implies that he is actually educated. So he has a background history of from an educated background. So he's not like your average uh, peasant who speaks loudly, uh, and so forth. So that's very interesting. So, uh, how did you meet? So, I'm going to roll on this d4 to see how we met. So, four. So, they are fascinated by you and are proposing work under you as an apprentice. Okay. So, that's very interesting. So, I am going to write down this um, as short as I can. So, born one. So, this is a father. 
uh, of two of twins, and um, and basically he's a farmer, but he actually secretly wants to you know elevate from that position. So um, we might have visited their their villages and help their the villages overcome some kind of difficulties using our power. Uh, maybe even help his two twins. Um, maybe where they were playing around in the lake, um, they nearly get drowned, and I use some magics to to save them. And this father um, sees it as a, a sign that you know th there is more in this world, even though it's taxing. So we probably get exhausted after using our our, our magic. Um, but the father actually, you know still find it better than just toll, tolling on the uh, on, on, on the field uh, so there it gives him hope uh, so that's the bond that we are having so let's go to the next prompt uh, so again it's a uh, it's, first of all it's a d6 and a d4 and we see the absolute value so let's see what we get so it's one and two so it's just basically proceed by one more so let's look at this second one a Bell. So this is where we get interesting. So this is where we can learn new spells in in this game. So um, we're gonna first of all see who what spell it is gonna be. So we can roll on a d6 to see what kind of spell it is. Five. So it's a language spell, and uh, the complication is that roll the dice, pull based on your power plus risk die, if any, which we don't have because we're currently in the uh, perfect control. Uh, you cast a new spell for the first time, excited to test your skill. What could go wrong versus a difficulty of six? So this is where we come to the test of this game. So um, as you can see, different power level uh, will come with different die sets for this test. So in order to um, succeed in the um, versus a difficulty of six, you will need to roll at least one die uh, at six. And um, if it's just one, then you will get one success. If it's more than one dice, then you will get two successes. And if you don't get any, then you will get a fail. So you will read different results. Uh, given our power level is currently still one, so we have a bit of arcane, uh, potential if you like uh, we're gonna learn this language I guess the reason why we're gonna learn this language is because we are traveling we're starting to go to different places um, and we need to find a way to talk to those people because obviously we don't speak all languages so this is gonna be new spells that helps us helps us find those visiting families and we are gonna do this test. So the test involves a D8, D10, and D12. Sorry, uh, D12, yeah. There you go, so difficulty six. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we have two success because we have a seven and a uh, and the eight. So an innocent bystander or animal is maimed. And people know, gain marked by a dangerous aura scar. So um, in that case, it's not very good. Um, I would say it's marked by. So I would say um, it is some of those farmers. Uh, what we're trying to do is in the middle of the night, uh, the father of the twins um, who is fascinated about us, who wants to be a, an apprentice of us, um, uh, invited us to his house and then for, to, to stay for a night and at night I'm trying to learn the snail skills and there are some local farmers who came over and uh, try to peek on us because they have heard what we've done to save the twins um, but obviously the uh, the spells using arcane magic is very texting so uh, in the middle of the night when I'm doing a, a ritual to learn these spells, um, the magic power just burst out of the windows and hit one of the uh, the local farmer boy. And uh, he's basically left with, uh, with a scar on his face. So 
Um, basically, it means that the uh, the village is no longer happy to have us in there. Um, and I guess in this case, the father will bring his kids, his twins, with us. Um, because obviously he's fascinated with our power still. So we'll see how it goes. So we already have two events. So it's time for us to do a little bit of a reflection. So um, the reflection is basically a time to take a breather and answer some prompts and uh, based on what we have. So our power is uh, still number one. We have learned a spell. The spell is language. Um, and we have a follower, which is a father of a, uh, a twins uh, who wants to be an apprentice of us um, simply because they are mates of our power. So ask yourself, if you have bonds, how do your bonds connect and humanize you? And what makes them indispensable, even those who you don't fully understand? And what would it take for you to understand? Or can you? Um, so we have a bond, which is the father of twins who wants to be an apprentice. I would say the way that it humanizes is because he's a father. And remember, we said we we are a uh, we are in orphanage. Uh, we are an orphan in, uh, in in this world. So seeing that a father's care for his twins um, is triggering our inner emotions. So in a sense that um, it it basically uh, proves to us that there is uh, there is human you know how human contact works. So. With that in mind, we're gonna to go to the next uh, event. So again, a D6 and D4. So it's five and one. So it's preceded by four. So we previously learned the language and we're going to number six in this case. So six is another spell. So let's see what kind of spells we're gonna learn this time. So it's going to be d6 plus d6. So the first d6 is 6 hyper and hyper guardian. Very nice. So it's hyper guardian. So, um, so the event number three, uh, the complications. Road dies, pull based on that. Um, if the process of mastering this spell, in the process of mastering this spell, you accidentally summon a, a wretched uh, shadow creatures, nameless, fearless, it seeks to possess your body. What do you do? Okay, so what do we do? So, I guess on our way to find these visiting families, um, we we have basically faced some kind of um, banditry. And these bandits are trying to hurt the uh, the father and the twins, and we decided that that's not not good. Uh, we have to find a way to protect ourselves, and the way to protect ourselves is obviously using learning the hyper guardians uh, spell. The problem is um, the way it works is that it will summon some kind of shadowy. Uh, creatures from other realms to be the guardians and it is very difficult to uh, to control them so we have to find a way to do that um, now the thing is interesting thing about this game is that because we have power level one and by doing more events the difficulties will go up and how do we increase the power levels to increase the power level is pretty straightforward we can give up a bond so give up one of the the previous connections that we have, uh, maybe sacrificing the father, and we will go from power level one to power level two. But given we are trying to protect the twins, um, I don't think that's what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna say is I'm just basically uh, out of desperations. Uh, we we're being attacked by these bandits. Uh, obviously, we are not uh, swordsmen. The father is just a you know farmer, even though he probably has some kind of education. Probably was a clerk, uh, but still, there's no way we can we can win um, this uh, against these these bandits. So, out of necessity, maybe we were just being ambushed. Um, uh, I have to you know summon this spell. 
that I am not fully mastered. So let's see what we what we what we get. So we're still level one. So D8, D10, and D12. So let's see what we get. So we got a seven, eight, and five. Oh, that's nice. So that's two success. So the creature is banished, but in the process, you learn that the shadow was an aspect of you all alone. What does this uh, epiphany means to you? So we gain one focus. That's good. And all resolve an existing scar. Okay. So we were marked by a dangerous auras from learning from the uh, from the language. Remember. Um, and that's probably why we were being we were drawing these bandits in the first place. Um, so I'm going to say that we are going to gain the focus. So I think it's fair that we still get the uh, the dangerous auras from the previous um, event. So, but the interesting thing is that. The shadow was an aspect of us all along. So in this case, we would just say that you know, in this case, there's a dark side in uh, in Theo, so the orphanage. So who knows? Maybe it's because of the war. Maybe he was involved in some kind of uh, wizard experiment previously, and that's probably why he was an uh, an orphan in the first place. We don't know, but let's let's go to the next one. So the next event. So it's one and one. So in this case, we just go to the next one. So this is already our fourth event. As you can see, this game is very short and uh, you can easily play within a, an hour or so. So this is just another great thing about this game. You don't have to write journals for months um, to finish the game. So gain a new bond. So we can have two options here. We can gain a new bond, or we can uh, nurture the an existing bond, which will basically intensify the relationship uh, with the uh, existing connection. So uh, in this case, I'm I'm gonna skip gaining the new bond. I'm going to uh, nurture the uh, existing bond. Um, in fact, uh, write down why and how. I'm gonna just probably roll on this as well. So it's a D force. So it's pretty straightforward. So let's see how it goes. Two. They were there when you needed them. They didn't need to do it, and yet you are all the better for it. So, uh, how do you feel? Gain one focus. So first of all, we have two focus now. So. Uh, if we get one more focus, then we will be able to increase our power. Uh, without sacrificing anyone. So I'm gonna say that the intensifier is with the twins. So um, The father is obviously an apprentice. He's trying to learn the uh, the, uh, the Attainer skills from from us which we're teaching them. So I don't think there's any increased uh, possibility there yet, but with the twins I don't even know what twins they are. So um, I would say these twins are a two Two girls of the same age as um, as I do, so um, they help tended my wounds during uh, after that bandit attack uh, because we summoned that uh, guardians, the hyper guardians, so we managed to fend them off. Uh, but uh, during that process, obviously, we are uh, heavily taxed by that spell, and also we are deeply wounded. So. Uh, I would say the twin girls tended my uh, or Theo's uh, wound, and um, and in that case, um, Theo felt the uh, the warmth of human connections probably for the first time in a very long time. Um, so we will say that is the intensified with the twin girls. Um, so this is our. Sorry, I've just kind of lost track of where we had. So then two, three, four. So this is the uh, six uh, already, the six event that we already have. So sorry, this is the fourth event that we already have. So um, it is, you know, getting closer to the end. 
Uh, and we're gonna do another reflection. So let's see what the next if reflection requires us to do. So if you have four events under your belt, take a breather and answer these questions. If you have bonds, how do your bonds connect and humanize you? What unexpected words do they use to reveal the depths of their appreciation, admiration, or belief in you? Do you believe it? Okay, we do have bond and um, Okay, so the bonds is obviously with the father. So the father is still the apprentice, uh, and also with those two, uh, with his twin girls who actually helped um, us tend our wounds and make us feel better. Uh, and I would say the words that they use is that they are showing not just uh, admirations, but there is obviously some kind of. Um, love in that involved so probably the twin girls both showed affections to Theo in this case and uh, because I don't know because it's just um, just happens to be what comes up first in mind but um, that is uh, what I say will be the, uh, the, uh, the the bonds and do or does Theo believe in it is the question and I would say yes at this point of time um, given his his story uh, I would say he, he he believes them in them so there's also another prompt here your actions are making a difference whether for better or worse only God knows how has the world noticed so I would say that because our initial intention to learn okay is to make this world a better world, and indeed it it has been a better world so far. So um, I would say people started to um, appreciate the uh, um, we we made a we, we become a little bit more famous. Probably not amongst normal normal common folks because um, obviously we learned that arcanes are forbidden by the state. So probably the families, the visiting families, start noticing us. So let's see what we get next. So a d six and d four. So progress by another one. So we were at the born. So we were at seven. So we go to. Eight. Now this is our seventh event, so we are very close. Sorry, this is our fifth event. Um, so a few more, and we'll get to the end. So another spell. So let's see what we get. So the spell will be two d sixes. So the first one will be five and a five. So purity thought. Okay, that is very interesting. Uh, and the stories here says you come across a most unusual artifact that whispers to you promises you untold power the offer is tempting before you could act on it however a cloaked stranger warns you of its dangers and the corruption it can sow what do you do so the artifacts is about purity thought um not sure what kind of artifact it is um I would probably say it is a um, it is a ring. Why not? It is a ring because um, it was given to us by uh, one of the twins, uh, who because obviously we are seeking a cane power. So um, she went ahead to the market, maybe look for the local um, I don't know the local wizards or the. Uh, um, fortune teller and and basically buy these trinkets and it turns out to be it is actually uh, an unusual artifact with powers and uh, and then we were visited by a cloaked stranger and i would say the stranger is definitely from the uh, visiting families because we previously said that we have started to become a bit more famous in the world amongst these uh, wizard families so uh, but it comes with the danger, and there will be corruptions. Um, but I guess we'll still try to learn it, um, given that the power it comes with is a purity thought, which I would probably interpret that is um, 
the ability to learn about this world uh, in, in a deeper way. So basically increasing our arcane power, which is what we want. So we're still at level one, <laughs> uh, which means we have D8, D10 and D12. So I would expect some kind of uh, failure very soon because we are versus a difficulty of D8, sort of D8, let's see. And indeed, so we have one, one and three. So it's a complete failure. So you still gain the spell, but at the cost, the worst possible outcome occurs, sacrifice a bond or lose a level of control. I don't think we want to sacrifice a bond. We only have one bond, which is with the father and the twin, uh, the father and also with the twin girls. If we're going to sacrifice, we're going to sacrifice them all because they count as one bond. Uh, we just intensified it in the first place. Oh no. I would say we are going to lose a level of control. So we were at perfect control. Now we are cracked. Which means that we will need to involve a risk dice of d8 when we go to the next event. So this is the fifth event. Let's go to the sixth, uh, the sixth one and see if we can survive our journey. So two and a two, so just go to the next one. So spell, another spell, another spell. Uh, this is D6 and D6 again. Let's see what we get. Three, four. So it is a promise failures. So I will interpret this as a spell that is, um, um, I was, I would interpret this spell as a way to, in, to influence other people, uh, so that, um, they will fail in their actions, no matter what, no matter how hard they try. So it's going to be a very powerful spell, um, promise failures and I mean, this will be useful in a lot of ways. Maybe when we are facing the villains, we will be able to use, cast these spells and it will promise their schemes will fail. But let's see how do we get to learn this in the first place. So, after news of your latest spell mastery somehow spreads, others begin to avoid you, refusing to even make eye contact. You hear them whisper names. What do they call you? How does your latest spell bring out the worst reputation and why does it adversely affect you? Uh, so pure thoughts, that was our previous spell. And I would say it's pretty straightforward because we have lost a, our control during that spell. So we, we were perfect and now we are cracked. So we might lash out to some innocent, maybe at the, at the twins, um, when we're trying to acquire that spell. Um, remember we had, when we learned the uh, previous spells, the Hyper Guardians, uh, it, 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 uh, it shows that there was a shadowy figures within us. So when we try to use the purity thoughts, probably that is what we use. We're trying to perch that, um, that shadowy figures from us so that we can proceed in our search for our cane. But during that process, we have actually, um, cracked, become, uh, uh cracked in regarding our, our self-control. So even though we succeeded in learning that spells, so probably the shadowy figures is gone, but what is actually our soul or our personality is slightly cracked. So we become more violent, more paranoid, and that is why people try to avoid us. Um, so we're going to start and see if we can learn this spell, the, uh, the promised failures. We're looking for power now, so we are going down the route. Uh, we're still at level one. Unfortunately, uh, so another D8, 10 and 12 versus 8. So let's see what we get. So we got a 12, so it's a success, one success. You try to make do and adjust as best as you can. You worry that others will begin to hunt or track you down. Gain a uh, reviled scar. So, so apparently in this case, 
um, we try to gain control. Uh, we did learn this spell, uh, but it is just really uh, taxing to us right now. So we will be becoming less of our previous self. We're no longer a kind person who helps uh, the, the father and twins in the first place. We're trying to go for power. It's not good. So that is the, uh, the sixth event. And again, it's time for us to reflect on our previous story. So we still have the bond with the father and the twins. Um, and they said that basically, sorry, it's actually not that one. It's this one. So how do your bonds connect and humanize you? How do your connection provide the only way to feel tethered to humanity? How deep is your fear that you will eventually lose them all? Well, that's, uh, that's very clear. So those twin girls are the only thing that keeps uh, feels um, um, connected to this world. He used to try to gain power to help the, the commoners uh, during the, uh, the war time. But it turns out that um, in the process of gaining power, he has corrupted his own souls and, um, and character. And the only thing that is left uh, that is good in his life will be the, the, the two twins. Um, and, uh, and it will basically be the greatest fear if he's going to lose them. So, last event, the seventh event, and we'll see what we have. So we are, we are number nine. So we we'll see how much we proceed. Five and three. So we proceeded by two. So we are at eleven. Another spell. So this is the last spell, and this is a really complicated spell. There are three d sixes. And we will see what we what we get. Two, six, five. So, a dark conjuration death. Wow, that is uh, uh, that sounds very really, very dark on its on on its own. So, dark conjuration uh, death. So, let's see what we get. You utter the final word of this spell and collapse into a broken heap. Your body spent after infinitely sleepless moments. As you lay dreaming, you, your recent efforts weaken the veil separating the realm of strange things of the dead, of great old ones, of higher mathematical concepts or any creatures related to the spell. And you are visited by a convincing faces individuals who are they and what are they beseech you to do do you accept so it is a uh, difficulties of nine so i would say this is finally the spell that uh, we proceed to learn because we think this is what can help um, end the war once and for all because remember we previously learned promise failures so probably during that up process we have started to use the spells amongst those warlords uh, in, in the world and uh, their schemes starting to fail but in that case it turns out that it doesn't do what we want it to, it to do so instead of it bringing peace it actually brings more death because uh, the more they fail the more they, um, they unleash uh, you know wars or attacks to each other so we decided that we need to conjure this spell, which just brings death to um, maybe to all these warlords or their army who is, you know, attacking cities and so forth. So um, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere good, to be honest. But, uh, so that's why we're good. But before we do that, we are visited by these convincing faces. These are the wizards. So these are the visiting families. Um, and they're saying that you are down into a dark path. You are down into the wrong path. Um, even though uh, spells are powerful uh, and we have become a really powerful uh, wizard through learning all the different spells. Um, 
but we don't necessarily know the consequences of, of using this spell. So we are going to say that, um, do I accept it? I will say, yes, I accept it that they want us to stop the spell, but um, so I might basically have already started this ritual uh, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> We're trying to stop it because of the twins. Um, that uh, that we obviously they tell us that if we continue, that everyone would die, including the twins. And in order to save them, we're trying to stop it. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. So, just d8, d10, and d12 versus difficulties of nine. And it is a complete failure. <laughs> so it's eight, four, and six. So. You still gain a spell, but at a cost, the worst possible outcome occurs. Sacrifices, a bond or lose. Oh, actually, sorry, I forgot to do say we have to roll the wrist dice as well, which is a d8, which is an eight, which means that we haven't triggered any calamity, but the worst outcome, possible outcome occurs. Sacrifice a bond or lose a level of control, which we are at cracked. Um, I don't think I want to sacrifice the uh, the twins, the twin girls. So um, I guess we'll just go down to the broken. So there you have it. That is the seven event. Um, that is, uh, I mean, there will be an ending to the story, uh, but I am not going to go through that because uh, I hope that people will be able to discover it themselves. As you can see, this is a relatively short game. Uh, you can easily play it in probably half an hour if you don't do like what I did, you know, describing all the, all the events or writing down uh, that many paragraphs. But it is interesting because this game involves um, these kind of little tests and you know, just a few tr uh, traits that you need to track and that is quite enough to um, allow people like myself who prefer using gameplay to generate stories than simply just writing a prompt. Uh, which this game does have these prompts, um, but it's just sometimes more dynamic to, to be able to roll a few dice and see the result and interpret that result. Uh, on top of that, as you can see, this is a beautifully designed book, even though it's just using uh, a few AI generated tools. The way it's laid out, um, it's just one of the most beautiful RPGs that I've seen, and uh, and you know this is one of the things that I rarely mentioned um, in solo RPGs, especially in the in the indie areas where you know people put their own work in um, onto each aisle. Quite often, they obviously uses the same free assets, um, the same free uh, arts that that you can use. Uh, and you will soon find the same face, same same icons everywhere, or the same fonts. And this is a showcase that what you can do with just some uh, clever design, um, and maybe some even AI generated artwork, and it will make it significantly better. Um, the problem with this game is uh, simple: uh, is that you can't get a physical copy in English. Uh, there is a wonderfully created. Uh, version in Italian, which is a stitch bind ones, but there is no English ones. Um, and the way that I get this one is through self printing services. So I use this the Lulu printing services, um, and uh, you basically have to kind of uh, redesign the PDF a little bit, uh, namely because this was uh, designed in 16 by 9 ratios as well. So you can't even just print it on an A4 size. Uh, this is in A4 size and what I did was actually I added a, a black bar on the top and a black uh, on, and, and the bottom so uh, and, and basically it looks like it is uh, it is how it was designed in fact it was like only just basically the, the middle part which is perfect for the modern monitors uh, because it's in 16 by 9 ratios but if you want a physical copy you will have to oh, or a physical copy in English, you will have to print it out yourself. But yeah, that is the uh, the the madness for you, and it is a surprise to myself because I do enjoy this uh, solo journaling games more than I would expect. Um, and hopefully, you will get a chance to play this as well. This is on HIO. 
Uh, it is uh, not a cheap game. This is about $15, but the good news is that um, the author, Momatos, uh, she supports the, uh, the community um, uh, in a way that basically if you ask for a community copy, she will just send you one with no questions asked. Um, and also, this was included in one of the uh, uh, support bundles uh, about a month ago, which a lot of person, a lot of lot of you already purchased. So um, you probably already own this game. So uh, if you're interested, go and check it out, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.